Ladies and gentlemen, to Bond Radio. This is Bond Radio, and you're listening to the show with no name. Time for liftoff. Ten, ten, nine. nine Countdown eight, with me, my seven, amigos. Six, I need five, your help. Four, three, We're going to some two, exciting places one, today. I hope you're zero. with me. Ignition. Let's get ready to rock. Lift off. Come on, baby. Let's do this. Come on, get up there. Get on up. Come get on. ready. Hold on to your yes. hat. Yes. On your seat belt. Fasten your seat belt. Hold on to your hat. Get ready for the ride of your life. The show with no name time. Welcome, amigos. Welcome aboard. It's round one of today's show with no name. Four rounds of pure energy and excitement and English learning exclusively here on Vaughn Radio. And it is both a pleasure and an honor to have you with us for another exciting edition. I hope you guys are ready to rock. And by the looks of it, al parecer, you're always ready to rock. As we say in my country, you were born ready. Oh yeah. Listos para acción, ready to rock. One of my favorite idiomatic expressions. Yeah. Show with no name. Welcome, show with no namers. I trust that you are nice and warm. Calentitos. Well, it's hot out there. It's summertime. At least in the northern hemisphere. Maybe down in Bariloche. It's winter, but not here. But that's cool because we've got tons of show with no namers and FYIers in the Southern Hemisphere. Seriously, FYI is on the charts in Argentina. So thank you, thank you, thank you, amigos in Argentina. We've got FYIers and show with no namers in Argentina, which is awesome. And it's not only that we have listeners there, but we are on the charts. We, I say FYI because it's not me. I mean, I'm the producer. I do everything from start to finish. But we, together, it's a class. So it's our success, my amigos. And just a quick reminder, brand spanking new episode on something that I think is uh, important these days, right at the start of summer vacation. It's airports. Most of us have found ourselves running through one of these busy hubs at one time or another. Whether you're rushing to catch a connecting flight or just to get home after a long, joyless journey, all of us have experienced this packed place where simply passing through is what most people do. Grab your suitcase and get ready to soar off to an exciting English enclave. We'll learn all about airports on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English, you got it. You got it. That's right, guys. Brand spanking new episode of FYI. It just dropped, I would say, I think about an hour ago it dropped. So it's on airports and it's a lot of useful vocabulary that I think anybody and everybody can benefit from. All right, folks, time for our first challenge, our pop 
quiz. Come on, haters. Let's go. You know it. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Yeah. Pop quiz. Let's go. Pop quiz. Come on. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. Pop quiz. That's right. That's right, amigos. It is our pop quiz only on the show with no name. And today it is coming right out of English Everywhere, which was my first book. I can't believe it. Over 15 years ago, English Everywhere. And it's still a relevant book. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking of books, you've got my latest book as well. This book is The Shit. Nunca he understood why to the people it made fun the character of Spider Cerdo in the movie The Simpsons. It's not funny. What do you say? Spider Ham? Spider Ham. Ah. It's graciosísimo in English. Claro, tiene todo el sentido. Es como el, 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 araña jamón. Eso es. Claro, tiene sentido que sea un cerdo. Y su identidad secreta es Peter Porker en vez de Peter Parker. Ah, claro, tiene sentido. Porker, que es como... A porker es un gordito y viene de pork, que es cerdo. Ah, tiene todo el sentido del mundo. Así da gusto aprender con This Book is the Shit, el tercer libro de Alberto Alonso. Y Damián Moya. No te pierdas nuestro método Milky. Vas a aprender un montón porque en realidad ya lo sabías todo. That's right, folks. This book is the shit. It's available wherever fine books are sold. You can also get it at our Vaughn Tienda. And today's challenge, I figured since summer holiday is officially here, well, some people will be traveling by car, road trips. Some people will be traveling by train. Some will be traveling by plane. And some all of the above, as you well know. So I figured we could take a look at some useful vocabulary. Now, if you have... My first book, English Everywhere. Well, you've got to turn to page 212, page 212, which is in the car, in the car. And uh, well, it comes with audio. So as you guys know, like all of our books, you can get audio with it as well. I'm sure many of you have the book, but either way, let's take a look at the challenge from my first book, English everywhere. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at um, a translation, a very useful translation, I-M-O, in my opinion. Now, let's see. This is how it goes. This is something that could save you if you're in a bind, in un apuro. It could really save your life. Here we go. Tengo un pinchazo. Podría mandar una grúa. So just imagine, you know, you, you have a problem. Your car breaks down. Se avería. Your car breaks down. And, uh, well, you got to call una grúa. So you get on the horn. Get on the phone. And you say, hola. Tengo, I hope you never have to use these sentences. Tengo un pinchazo. Podría mandar una grúa? All right. Let's warm up with a couple other ones while we're here. Because this is, a, again, very useful. Let's see some vocabulary. Un cuatro por cuatro. Let's see if you know these guys as you're warming up today. Un cuatro por cuatro is an SUV. Y fijaos, es an an SUV. All right, the next one. Capo. Well, that depends. If you're in the USA, it's the, do you know it? Hood. If you're in England, it's called the bonnet. The bonnet. 
Maletero. There's one that we don't agree on. Maletero. Maletero. We've got trunk in the USA and boot in the UK. And what about gato? Gato. No, no, not that one. I mean, gato, the thing that, you know, you got the thing that lifts the car up. That's called a jack. That's right. Jack. Grua, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to tell me. Retrovisor. That's your rear view mirror. It's a song as well by uh, Pearl Jam. Then you've got your fender, guardabarros, your mud saver. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We call it a fender. And when we have a little accident, nothing too serious, we call it a fender bender. A fender bender. All right. Uh, bend is doblar, doblar. Volante, the steering wheel. The verb is to steer. Salpicadero. I love what you call it. The splasher. <laughs> the splasher. That's a funny one. We call it the dashboard. You can also get that in a song as well. Paradise by the Dashboard Light. It's Meatloaf. Excellent song, by the way. Then you've got Guantera. Guantanamera. I always think of that. Aida Guantanamera. Guantanamera. Guajira Guantanamera. All right, so your glove box. Ojo con la pronunciación. No es glove, sino glove. Your glove box. Or the glove compartment. Pero vamos a ahorrar sílabas. Glove box. All right, a couple more. This is just the first page of In the Car of English Everywhere, my first book. ¿Me llevas al banco? Now, you can say, can you bring me to the bank? Pero yo, tú sabes, you know I'm looking for something a little more native there. Can you bring me to the bank? Eh. What about, can I get a ride to the bank? Can I get a lift? Can you give me a ride? Can you give me a lift? Hay una, una aplicación que se llama Lyft con Y. Because you, you order a lift, un paseo. Excellent one to know. Another one. Dale a la bocina. Honk or beep the horn. And my favorite one. ¿Queda mucho? Now, we don't say, is there a lot left? Porque eso sería la traducción literal. We say, are we there yet? Y es frase, sí, que hasta lo hacemos de broma cuando, en, una, en un viaje muy largo al principio. You're like, are we there yet? Creo que es la misma intonación. So, folks, you can get all that in English everywhere. Let's go on over to our virtual chat room and we'll see who's on board ready to rock. Hello, show with no namers. Welcome. Let's see who's here and who's participating in our pop quiz. We're starting off with, whoa, so many people. Born to Iron Man. He says, morning, folks. Morning, buddy. Morning, pal. Vero. Vero says, morning, beautiful show with no namers slash warriors around the universe. T-G-I-F. Thank God. It's Friday. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Thank God it's Friday. And if you're listening to this on another day, well, thank God it's that day, too. Every day is a gift from God. Toma. There you go. Every day is magical, especially if you guys are on board. Let's see. Born to Iron Man says, I'm on the road to the Pyrenees. So are you in a car? Or are you on your bike? Because if you're in a car, I couldn't have picked a better uh, pop quiz for you today. Well, either way, de todas formas, enjoy, man. Enjoy your trip. I love the Pyrenees. Kubla. Kubla says, sup, remarkable mortals. Let's shape up 
or ship out. That's something my mom used to say. Ponte las pilas o a la calle. Shape up or ship out. And you guys know it from a song. Has, has, has it popped into anybody's mind? You know what song I'm talking about? You better shape up. Cause I need a man. And my heart is set on you. You're the one that I want. You better shape up. Más te vale ponerte las pilas. Great one, Kubla. Welcome aboard. Let's see. Morning unpaired show with no namers. Says Chris Valrol. Have a nice trip, Iron Man. No doubt. Enjoy. You deserve it. You deserve it. Let's see. Kubla participating in our pop quiz from my book, English Everywhere. And he says, I have a flat tire. Can you send a tow truck? Absolutely. Great job, Kubla. I have a flat tire. The only thing, I'll add something. It's not wrong, but Americans, we would spell it T. I-R-E instead of T-Y-R-E, but it's correct. I have a flat tire. Can you send a tow truck? Right? And a tow truck es un remolque. To tow something es llevarlo en remolque. So great one. Excellent. Let's see who else is participating over here. Chris Valrol says, in the American written way, I have a flat tire. Could you send me a tow track? Just be careful. Chris, you misspelled the word. Excuse me, I just sneezed. You couldn't hear it because I was able to lower the volume. But man, it's what happens when you garden before the show. I've got like pieces of leaves Leaves in my nose. Trozos de, de hojas. <laughs> I can feel them tickling my nostrils. How do you say those? Los agujeros de la nariz. <laughs> so Chris says, I have a flat tire. Could you send me a tow track? But the word we're looking for is tow truck. But great job, nonetheless. Let's see. Who else is on board and ready to rock? We've got, I, 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 let's see, Chris, Chris Valrol says, Greece. Oh, yeah, it's definitely from Greece. And in that song, you can learn like a couple different things. Like, you can learn, you'd better, que como bien sabéis, nosotros no decimos, you'd better. Que eso sería la contracción de, you had better, que eso seguro que no lo decimos. Es que es incómodo decirlo. You had better? Yeah, right. Good luck hearing somebody say that. You'd better. You'd. D -d 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 -d. But, 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 Americans don't pronounce that D at all. You better. You better listen to me. You better shape up or ship out, young man. You better get with the program to get with the program. And there's a song. The Who. You better, you better, you better, you bet. You better bet your life. Jugando con eso. Más te vale apostar o jugarte la vida. You bet, you bet, you better bet your life. Listen to it. It'll help you practice this. And you better. I'm sure you can hear it. Oh, claro. How can I forget? In the middle of summer. Oh, you better not shout. I don't remember the lyrics. Santa Claus is coming to town. Hey, maybe this will help you guys cool down a little bit in this summer heat. But this uh, this is the one where you can learn that one. And it's a classic. You need to know. So, you better watch out. Mas te vale ten tener cuidado. You better not cry. Mas te vale no llorar. You better not pout. Lloriquea like... <laughs> You better not pout, I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, so you'd better. 
And then she tells him, you better shape up. Más te vale poner las pilas. Cause I need a man. If my heart is set on you. Y de ahí, estoy empeñada en ti. My heart is set. O sea, son las primeras dos frases de una canción que conocemos todos. And they are chock full of content. Chock full of content. Right? Chock full of is repleto de chock full of. Let's see. Uh, Vero says, who? The who? No. The guess who? <laughs> you weren't expecting that one. Es que hay un grupo que se llama The Guess Who. También adivina quién. <laughs> They're the ones who do American woman, stay away from me. American woman, mama, let me be. Yeah, let me be. Déjame en paz. I'm no good for you. Yo no valgo para ti. You're no good for me. I look you right straight in your eyes. Te miro directamente al ojo and tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave you, baby. I'm gonna leave you, woman. I'm gonna leave you, baby. Great song, huh? Learning English from expressions. Let's take a look at a few more translations here from my book, English Everywhere, since our buddy is on the road, born to Iron Man. This is dedicated to you. Here we go. Su coche es una chatarra. His car is a lemon. Eso es, lo llamamos un limón. Solo fue un toque, un raspón. I just gave you this one. Were you paying attention? It was just a fender bender. Okay. No seas un pasajero que da órdenes al conductor. Don't be a backseat driver. No nos sigas demasiado de cerca. O no sigas demasiado de cerca. Don't tailgate. Don't tailgate. Again, these are all from my first book, English Everywhere. And remember, to tailgate is also hacer una fiesta antes de un concierto en el parking. En la parte atrás de tu camión. ¿Ok? <laughs> es que no sé cómo se dice eso en español. Con una palabra. En inglés es tailgating. It's an American right. Es un, un derecho nuestro. All right, so here's another one. Su nuevo coche tiene muchos extras. His new car has all the bells and whistles. Good. What about this one? Haz un giro de 180 grados. O sea, date una vuelta entera. Tienes que volver en el otro sentido. Do a U-turn. A U-turn. Una gira U. Do a U. Piénsalo. And a K-turn. Una gira K. Así es como te metes when you're parallel parking. Cuando tienes que aparcar en una ciudad entre dos coches o un árbol, un coche, whatever. That's called parallel parking. And you have to do a K-turn. ¿Por qué? Porque haces una K. And a U-turn is, pues, tienes que volver en la otra dirección. You got to turn around. All right? We looked at this one the other day. Me pido el asiento de adelante. Shotgun. Shotgun. Él siempre está presumiendo de sí mismo. He's always tooting his own horn. He's always tooting his own horn. All right. Two more. These are great ones. They're totally native over here. Este coche chupa. Gasolina. We say, this car is a gas guzzler. This car is a gas guzzler. And to guzzle is... This car is a gas guzzler. And the last one from English Everywhere. Vamos a pisarlo fuerte. Vamos a ponernos en marcha. Vamos a coger velocidad. Let's put... The pedal to the metal. All right. Some really native expressions 
for those of you who are going to be taking some road trips this summer. Folks, we're going to a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with tons more show with no name. So stick around. Hey, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name, exclusively on Vaughn Radio. We've got so much to do in this second part of the show. I know you guys are ready to rock. As always... All right, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back. Just a quick reminder, you've got tons of amazing things at our website from courses, one-to-one, group courses, Vaughn Town, summer intensives. We've got it all. All you have to do is go over to our website, groupofvaughn.com. You can also give us a call if that's easier, 911-385831. That's right, folks, groupofon.com, where English is exciting. And if you're looking for self-study options, you can go on over to our website, VaughnTienda.com or contact us on social media. All right, amigos, welcome back. Welcome back to the second part of the show. We've got so much to cover, so let's take a look at the Say What soundbite. Say what? What? That's right, amigos, it's the Say What Soundbite only on the show with no name. Yeah, exciting, interactive, 
educational and erotic. No, tampoco. Pero buscaba una E, erótico. <laughs> well, hey, it can be. It can be whatever you want. I once had tell had somebody tell me that they get they get turned on by my voice. And Richard Vaughn has had the same thing. So maybe it is erotic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's why we don't give the show a name. Whatever it is to you, it is. It is what it is, amigos. All right. Well, today we're going to listen to a, a truly famous person. Everybody knows this guy all around the world. And he's quite a controversial character. But I love controversial characters. They're my favorite. Folks, here's your Say What soundbite for the first time. Please write down what you hear. And I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. Oh, my goodness. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. We believe you. We believe you. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's hear it a second time, and then we'll discuss it. I'd like to hear what you heard in your best English. And I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. All right. And while you guys are thinking it over, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our star program. It's Vaughn Town. Listen carefully. Can you hear that? No, no. Listen closer. I'm not talking about the birds chirping. I'm talking about everybody speaking English and feeling comfortable. Listen. This is what it's like at Vaughn Town, a peaceful place where you can really learn English and lose your inhibitions. There's a reason it's one of our star programs. Vaughn Town, lose your fear of speaking English. If you want more information about this immersive experience, go to groupofvaughn.com or give us a call, 911-385831. Lose your fear of speaking English and express yourself with clarity at Vaughn Town. All right, amigos, Vaughn Town. In fact, a big shout out to my student, my interstellar student, Garmin. She's at Vaughn Town right now. So if you're listening, Garmin, I couldn't be prouder. No podría estar más orgulloso de ti. I know it's going to be the ultimate experience. All right, let's see. Let's see who's in our chat room participating. Chris Valrol says, is refreshing singing Christmas carols in summer? Oh, no, I, okay. Es uh, afirmación. It's. Entonces, porque si no es pregunta. So is it refreshing? No. Si empiezas con is. So it's refreshing singing Christmas carols in the summer. I agree, Chris. You want to sing some more? No, no, I won't. I promise. I'll stop. Kubla says, Roger Daltrey. What a voice. That's right. From the who. And uh, man, they've got some really great songs to help you learn English as well. There's my dad, Captain Diego, ready for takeoff. Listo para despegue. There he is. You're cleared for takeoff, Captain Diego. All right. Have a nice flight. He says, good morning, Alberto. Friends and family, greetings from Greenwood Lake, New York. What's up, Dad? Welcome aboard. Okay. Let's see. Who else? I've got a lot of uh, 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 edifying, exem exemplary. Oh, okay. I see, Kubla. You're adding ease. Okay. Peter says, Connor McGregor. Peter, you know that that is not English. 
you can't come to my class and say, blue? I'll never accept that. Ever, 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 ever in a million years. Conor McGregor? Eso es hacer estructura en inglés? Come on, buddy. Is it? Hombre, tampoco te estoy pidiendo mucho más, pero que pongamos verbo sujeto, you know? This is English class. Oh, man. 45? ¿Dónde está la, la pregunta? <laughs> Good morning to you, too. Good morning. But you know how I feel about one-word answers or questions or whatever. All right, let's see. Kubla taking a stab at today's Say What soundbite. And he says, I heard a lisping American champ displaying his modesty and humility regarding his next bout. Wow. First of all, lots of totally natives in there, Kubla. And great job. Right on point. You were even sarcastic. Y lo pillé. Es difícil en texto, right? Si no hay tono. But I got you. Displaying his modesty and humility, air quotes. <laughs> and a lisp. If you have a lisp, you speak like this. Right? You have a lisp. Daffy Duck had a lisp. He says, this is despicable. Despicable. I'm spitting all over my microphone. Uh, so I heard a lisping American champ. And a champ is un campeón. Displaying, demostrando his modesty and humility regarding his next bout. And a bout is mm, enfrentamiento. Good, great stuff. Kubla, excellent. Leonardo, there he is in the house. And Leonardo says, he sounds like a boxer. Spot on. Who has just won a fight in the interview, in front of the mic. Ooh, wow, Leo, you are cryptically. I mean, that, that's great. I love what you did there. Guy, you guys are brilliant. In front of the mic, he takes the opportunity to dedicate his victory to someone and say that he is the best boxer ever. Leo, you are a heavyweight champion. There's no doubt in my mind, Leonardo is a heavyweight champion. Kubla, anybody else want to participate in the Say What soundbite? I'm going to give you another minute because usually what happens here is I move on and then we get a lot of participation. And I, I have to understand that. Well, it takes time to think about, well, to, to, to hear it, you know, process it, and then think about what you want to say in English, right? So, let's see. Anybody else? Let's sing some Christmas songs in the meantime. All right? What's another one? Um, I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus Underneath the mistletoe last night El muérdago. Muérdago, you say mistletoe, donde das el beso. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus underneath the mistletoe last night. What about this one? Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Or what about, Dad, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. The little drummer boy. Hey, maybe in our heads, if you put the AC up, you crank it. Le das a tope al aire acondicionado. You spray some salt water into the air. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe in our heads, we'll be at the beach. You know? Hey, if you guys have a, uh, you know what I, I love? I love those little, I don't drink cocktails. But I love the little cocktail umbrellas. Like, how could you not feel like you're on vacation, even if you're drinking water? And somebody puts a lemon in the water and one of those little cocktail umbrellas on a toothpick and un palillo. Life is good, you know? <laughs> All right, let's see. Chris Valrol. She says, I heard an American man with a particular lisp. Great. Y fíjate qué cruel, ¿no? Que la palabra lisp no lo pueden pronunciar. 
En, en serio. Like, lift. Es, es, tiene una S. Like, tenían que haberle... Quizás speech impediment es más fácil. I don't know. A lift. I couldn't get a lot because he speaks a mile a minute. Yeah, well, it sounds like the guys... You know, if, if it's what you guys said after a fight, well, it sounds like he's got adrenaline rushing through his veins, right? The guy's probably got... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dopamine. Just, you know... I imagine. I imagine. He's buzzing. Zumbando. But I got that he's dedicating a fight to someone. To I don't know who. Excellent job, Chris Valrol. Again, it's not about understanding it all. It's about telling us what you heard. Even if that means you didn't get it all. So, Chris, excellent job. Excellent job to all of you. And now it's time to move on, though. We've got to move on to another section, one of our most challenging challenges. Yeah, I know it's a bit redundant. Bueno, pero así vemos retos y retantes, que es mucho mejor que difíciles. It's our spelling bee. Spelling bee. Spelling bee. Spelling B. Spelling B. Spelling B. That's right, amigos. That's right. It's our spelling B only on the show with no name. And I'm excited about today's spelling bee. You know how this works, guys. I'm going to spell some words for you now. And I want to see if you guys can figure out these words. Si podéis averiguar estas palabras. I think, I think it's going to be pretty easy because we've had some really tough ones lately. But let's, uh, let's get in the mood. Right? Hay que meterse aquí en el... In el papel. Here, we got to play the role. Get in the mood. Empezar a sentirlo, right? All right. These words will be capitalized because they are proper nouns. Is everybody ready? Here's round one of today's spelling bee. The first one is G-R-E-A-T space S-M-O-K-Y space M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-S. The second one is G R A. N D space C A N Y O N. The third one is Z I O N. The fourth one is R O C K Y space M O U N T A I N S. The fifth one is A C A D I A. And the last one is Y O S E M I T E. Wow. Hmm. Ouch, 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 ouch. All right. Anybody? Let's go on over to the chat room over here and see if anybody was able to figure these out. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Giving you some time. The birds are chirping. They're tweeting. They're cheeping. You got three different ways to say it. Cheap. Barato. Suena igual. C-H-E-E-P. Tweet, que lo sabéis de Twitter, de Twitter, que no es Twitter, it's Twitter. But birds tweet. So, lo que se llama un tweet, esa parte sí que lo es, okay? And the other one, chirp, C-H-I-R-P. And they are all onomatopoeic. So, that's the good news about that. All right, let's take a look over here. It looks like we might have some contenders. Esto suena como... Boxeo. Maybe there's a boxing theme today. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> well, we have the bell every day in our spelling bee, right? All right. Kubla is taking a stab at it over here. Kubla. The first one is correct. The second one is also correct. The third one is perfect. The fifth one is amazing. The, I, 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 the fifth one. Yeah, yeah. The fifth one is correct. And...
Perfect job. Excellent job, Kubla. You nailed them. Also, we got Born to Iron Man as well. Excellent job, Born to Iron Man. And Chris Valrol, I see you have a couple mistakes in there. Uh, there's one there's one letter missing. You've got an exclamation point upside down, which is not a character in English, as you guys know. So excellent job. Unfreaking believable, guys. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Well, let's get started on round two over here. And we'll see how you guys do. Okay. Here we go. The first one is G-R-E-A-T space S-M-O-K-Y space M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-S. The second one, G-R-A-N-D space C-A-N-Y-O-N. The third one is... Z-I-O-N. The fourth one is R-O-C-K-Y space M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N-S. And the fifth one, A-C-A-D-I-A. And the last one, Y-O-S-E-M-I-T-E. -E. All right. I expect some more people to get it on that second go. Yes, these are, uh, 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 let's see, uh, uh, Kubla says, it looks like a list of iconic mountain chains and other topography accidents. Uh, I don't. I don't know if it's. Uh, they're not. I don't. Well, they're they're all national parks. Let's put it that way. These are all national parks located in the United States. So I don't know about the accident thing though. And uh, some of them are mountainous. Some of them are canyons. You get a little bit of everything. But yes, national parks in. The USA. And great job to everybody who nailed it. I know it wasn't easy, but you guys came through. <laughs> Cumplistes. <laughs> you came through. Amazing, amazing. So uh, the reason I chose these was because today in the year 1864, 1864, 1864, President... Well, let's see if you know who I'm talking about. Honest Abe. Honest Abe. Does that ring a bell? Four score and seven years ago. I guess this is really deep American history here. Well, Honest Abe, que no es honest, it's honest. Honest Abe is Abraham Lincoln. And uh, the 16th, he was the 16th, para usar los ordinales, he was the 16th president of the United States. And today he granted, to grant is conceder. A grant is una subvención. Makes sense. He granted Yosemite Valley to California for, and I quote, public use, resort, and recreation. And I think all of you are familiar with the Yosemite National Park. Well, this is basically the, I think, probably the most famous. Now, it's interesting, though, because a lot of Spanish people say Yosemite. And I get it, porque Vegemite, que normalmente eso es might. But you might be wrong. <laughs> you might, <laughs> you, you, okay, you, you might be, it's Yosemite, Yosemite. And this is located in the Western Sierra Nevada Mountains in Granada. No, I'm, not, I'm joking. Not those Sierra Nevada. But this is basically the Yosemite Valley is like the centerpiece of Yosemite National Park. 
And I'm sure you have all seen, there's a view that they call, and I think it's even on one of the, you know, the screen savers. And there's a view that's called the tunnel view. And you're just looking right through the valley. And the way that the edges, the cliffs, los acantilados are, it looks like you're looking down a tunnel. But what's a, a good way to describe it? Uh, Star Wars. You know Star Wars, the end sequence when the X-Wing fighters are going through those tunnels and it's, that's what it looks like. Only 10 times more beautiful because it doesn't look like a futuristic space thing. It looks like a natural paradise. And let's pronounce that word. Natural, nature, situation. No sabes la, las veces. Te digo, sería un hombre rico. Si, si me dieron. We say in English, if I had a nickel for every time I've heard situation, I would be rich. Si tuviera cinco centimos. So it's situation, nature, natural, statue, creature, future. You better be pronouncing these words with me. I hope you are. Future. Let's go over them again. Future, nature, creature, statue, natural, situation. The best way to think about this is in English, Americans, we take the word situation and we have cut it down. We love doing that. You know we love doing that. We've cut it down to sitch, S-E-T. C-H. So it's totally commonplace, común y corriente, it's totally commonplace to say to somebody, what's the sitch? En vez de, what's the situation? Pero nunca, what is the situation? What's the sitch? And the sitch is, we're going to a commercial break. The good news, we'll be right back with tons more. So... Stick around.
Hello, amigos. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show with no name. Exclusively on Vaughn Radio. That's right, amigos. Welcome back to the place where English is exciting. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, amigos. I hope you're having fun. I can't believe we are in the second half of today's show. It's mind-blowing. No me lo creo. I really can't believe it myself. As they say, time flies when you're having fun. And you can have fun all day long here on Vaughn Radio. Start your day with the Pro Bow Show with Rob Grams. You've got Richard Vaughn. you got Fitz and No Excuses. Followed by some wacky dude on the show with no name. Then you've got a real treat with Semena Holiday and test your English. And don't forget about the lunchtime show with Rob and Andy. Followed by Back to Basics with Tosh Pasqua. Then you've got Let's Get Random with Jules Linares. Western Civilization with Guy Williams. The Salad with Dave Boyce. And Kyle Miller's drive time. That's right, amigos. That's right. All right. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. It's time for Homophones on the show with no name. name, name. Homophones. Homophones on the show with no name. It's homophones time. It's homophones rhyme. They sound the same on the show with no name. The show with no name. Homophones on the show with no name Cause homophones die, cause homophones rhyme They sound the same on the show with no name The show with no name The show with home homophones Show with no name The show with no name, show with no name. That's right, amigos. That's right. It's homophones only on the show with no name. And I'm going to give you two words right now. And I want to know what these words are. And I want to know if they sound exactly the same or not. The first word is to tear something. Paper or a shirt. Hace ese sonido. Rasgar, desgarrar, rasgar, romper. Then it's also the noun. Una rotura. So a tear in fabric, tear, tore, torn. Uh, Fabric no es fabrica, es tela. Desgarrón, okay? Uh, What else? Eh, 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 eh. Bueno, también es eh, coger algo, arrancarlo de internet, un video, audio. So they have a DVD. Antes cogías un DVD y lo decís la palabra en español. De hecho, all right? Y también es descansa en paz. When we say that it's the initials, descansa, que en paz descansa o descansa en paz. Okay? Y también es um, cantarle las 40. Is that how you say it? It's, um, man, you really r- her. No voy a decir la palabra, casi lo digo. You really mm, her. Fuiste f- severo. So it's got a lot of meanings there, that first one. And we'll take a look at it as always. The second word is to harvest, to get something as a return. Cosechar, segar, recoger, ver los frutos de algo. It's a great word, especially if you guys are learning English, right? All right, uh, let's see what we've got, my amigos. We'll see if you guys were able to figure it out. Also, while you're thinking it through, I wanted to play something for you guys. I'm sure many of you saw it. But the other day on the very popular show, El Hormiguero, uh, my friend Juan, who's not my partner, my partner's Damian, he's Barrancas. Well, my, my friend Juan Trancas, when the current president was visiting the program, 
he mentioned our book. This book is the milk. Let's watch it and give it a listen. El señor Feijóo se ha apuntado a clases de inglés. ¿Qué consejo le daría para aprender bien? Porque usted lo ha hablado fenomenal. Hombre, pues, eh, pues paciencia right. y, well, y sobre todo, hombre, que no utilice like esta excusa de que convoque right las elecciones now, so, uh, y por tanto le chafé su primera clase. Sorry, de... nothing I can do there. Sometimes we have some tech problems. Hopefully you'll be able to check it out. I'm sure you can find it if you go over to Antena 3. What is working is our Say What soundbite, and I'm about to give that to you for the third time. Please write down what you hear. And I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. All right, my amigos, there it is. There it is. That's your Say What soundbite for the third time. And also now we're going to take a look at our homophones and see if you guys were able to figure it out. All right, let's see. Chris, Chris Van Roll says, well, let's get a little beat going, guys. Come on, is it Friday or is it Friday here? Come on. And if it's not, make it feel like a Friday. Why not? Today's Friday. I don't care what day you're listening to it. It's freaking Friday, baby. Even if it's a Monday, doesn't matter. Make it feel like a Friday. Even if you're in the dead of winter, you can make it feel like summer. Sure you can. It's up to you. Mind over matter. La fuerza de la mente. Chris says, I'm looking at the image. Y vamos a mirar esa palabra. No es image, es image. Rima con bridge. Dilo todos, por favor, conmigo. I'm looking at the image of Yosemite, you said, right now. And it's gorgeous. Oh, man. Well, that's on our list, on our bucket list. Bringing the family, getting a trailer over there, and going around. Going around, checking out the different national parks, which we're going to check out in just a moment. We're going to check out our national parks. And then we've got Name That Movie. Oh, man, we got a lot of stuff to do. Let's put it that way. All right, let's see. Homophones. Kubla says it's mm and mm. And they don't sound the same. All right. Chris Valrol says it's mm and mm. And I'd say they're not homophones. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Kubla says the first time I heard about an actor by the name of mm Torn, I thought it was a joke. Yeah, it's true. I didn't want to say the word because I don't want to give it away yet. But yeah, that's a funny one. Weird name. Is it a stage name? I remember that guy. He was weird. <laughs> but I do remember thinking, who gave him that name? It's a weird one. Porque significa lo mismo. No? Rasgar, rasgado. It's the guy's name. <laughs> it's a cruel joke. All right. The first word is rip. Rip. Okay, criticar. You really ripped her. Okay, you really ripped her or you ripped into her. La criticaste severamente. To rip into somebody. You ripped your shirt. Okay, look at that rip on the curtain. How did that get there? Right? Let her rip. Es, vamos, arrancamos. Let her, let her rip. Pero nos comemos la H. Let her rip. Let her rip. Rip is also rest in peace. Rest in peace. We rip pa paper, we rip clothing. Es ese romper. Okay? Rip. Say it with me. It's a short I. Rip. Rip. And the second word? Reap. Reap. I'll say both of them now. The first word is rip. The second word is reap. They are not homophones. That's right. Rip versus reap. They don't sound the same. So now I want you to say them with me. Rip. Eh. Rip. Rip. Vamos a ver palabras que riman. Rip. Tip. Drip. Help me. Flip. Clip. Todos deberían tener ese mismo son. Todos riman. Rip. Clip. Strip. Flip. Trip. Right? 
I'm sure you can think of many others. But once you know that eh sound, you got it. In all of them, okay? The second one, reap. Let's find some rhyming words with reap. Reap, beep, leap, uh, uh, peep, right? E, it's E, E Latina. So rip, tip, flip, reap, sleep, keep, right? And this way, you'll always be able to distinguish not just between these two words, but between those two vowel sounds. And I think that's the key. So always look for rhyming words and always do this part aloud. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a winner in our Say What Soundbite. Please give it up for Kubla, our heavyweight champion of the world. All right, all right. What else do we have to do? We've got some stuff to do over here. What were we doing? Oh, yeah. We've got to go back to our, what, what is it? Our uh, 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 spelling bee, spelling bee. See, guys, that's what happens. We got so much stuff going on, so many comments, which I think is awesome, but sometimes it's a bit overwhelming and my brain gets lost. Uh, I'm getting older, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, we're looking at national parks really quickly before we head to the movies. And just a quick reminder there's an FYI episode and a bonus episode available to everybody, and that is on national parks in the USA. In a land of innovation and ideas, it's often called America's Best Idea. We will weigh in on the wonders of nature and wildlife in the wilderness. Join me as we face new frontiers while picking apart picturesque national parks in the USA on today's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. So check it out, folks. I just shared the links with you for the first episode and the bonus episode on national parks. It's FYI. Remember, you can get FYI wherever you listen to your Vaughn podcasts. And today, you got a brand spanking new episode on airplanes. You got two episode on two episodes on national parks, which I just shared. All right, let's get. You know, I like to get that ambiance over there. There we go. The first one we're looking at is the Great Smoky Mountains. The Great Smoky Mountains, as they're called. They receive 13 million visitors a year. We're going in in order of the most visitors per year. Okay, so I'm going to give you the most popular ones in the spelling bee. The first one was the Great Smoky Mountains. Okay, the Great Smoky Mountains. Beautiful area. Let me see over here. Let me find my place. Excuse me one second. The Great... The, uh, the Great Smoky Mountains are located in, if I'm not mistaken, the Smoky Mountains. They're, they go all across Tennessee. Espera. See, this is how big my country is that I just forgot. The Great Smoky Mountains Natural Park straddles the border between North Carolina and Tennessee. So sorry, friends, but it is the most visited by far and let me give you the, the figures here. As I said, 13 million visitors a year. The second place one was Grand Canyon National Park. You know that one. You call it El Canyon de Colorado. We call it the Grand Canyon. And listen to the difference. I just told you the Great Smoky Mountains receive 13 million visitors a year. Well, Grand Canyon, 4.7. 4.7. Like 13 and not even five. That's crazy. So the Great Smoky Mountains are by far the most visited. Then you've got Zion, Theon. I think this is a place in Israel or something like this. Zion National Park. Now, this isn't in Israel. These are all in the United States. And this one is in Utah. It's in Utah. I've never been there, but it looks absolutely amazing. You know what? Like, how do you choose a favorite? They're all gorgeous. Then you've got the Rocky Mountains, the famous 
Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Let me see if they're in other states as well. Yes, they are. Uh, 3,000 miles, so that's probably the distance between New York and Madrid, from British Columbia and Alberta in Canada, and they go through Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, the Rocky Mountains, and those receive 4.3 million visitors. So really, the second, third, and fourth place are kind of at the same level there. And then you've got Acadia, which also receives about 4 million visitors a year. And I think this is probably one of the most beautiful. Although, as I said before, it's hard to decide. And Acadia National Park is just an amazing place. It is on the eastern coast of the United States in Maine. Okay, Maine. And it's just a rocky coast with lighthouses. It's absolutely beautiful. And the one we came to talk about today, Yosemite, which I think, even though it's not the one with the most visitors, it's definitely the most popular worldwide, I would say. That one and Jellystone. No, I didn't say Yellowstone. Yellowstone is really a national park. Uh, Jellystone, does anybody recognize Jellystone, hey, boo-boo, we're going to go to the park. Let's see if we can get some picnic baskets. <laughs> Yogi Bear. So that was a, a play on words. You would They would say the real one is called Yellowstone, but they called it Jelly, like Mermelada, Jellystone Park. All right, amigos, I hope you enjoyed our little nature walk through America's national parks. But right now, we're going to go indoors, an indoor activity. We're going to the movies. Name that movie. That's right, amigos, that's right. It's Name That Movie only on the show with no name. And as always, we're going to learn English from movies. I can't wait to see the new Indiana Jones flick. I think it's going to be awesome. Oh, and something I forgot to tell you, I meant to tell you before in the homophone section, that uh, the expression, we looked at the word reap, the expression is the same in English. You reap what you sow. Recoge lo que siembras. You reap what you sow, okay? I don't know if you believe it, but that's what they say. You reap what you sow. And just be careful with the word sow as well. The word sow is S-O-W. However, it's pronounced exactly the same as S-E-W, coser. El que no se pronuncia así es su demandar. So su, S-U-E, demandar. S-E-W, que muchos suelen pronunciar su, no es su, it's so. So, imagínate S-E-W y S-O-W. Imagine those two words being homophones, because they are. All right, here's today's Name That Movie. Three teenage girls come of age while working at a pizza parlor in the Connecticut town of Mystic. So, three teenage girls come of age. And to come of age is to get bigger, uh, hacerse mayor. Uh, muchas veces hablan de estas películas de la juventud. A coming of age drama. De gente que se está haciendo adulto. Haci está haciéndose mayor. No mayor de viejo, pero de niñez a, a, a ser mayor. So three teenage girls come of age while working at a pizza parlor. A pizza parlor, a pizza joint. Eso es una pizzería. A pizzería, you can say as well. In the Connecticut town of Mystic. And is anybody getting hungry? Yeah, I want a slice of pizza, too. Yummy. This mouth-watering treat has always tantalized our taste buds. The combination of crispy crust, 
tangy tomatoes and melted cheese mixing together melts in your mouth as you munch away. Fire up the brick oven. We're going to prepare a piping hot pizza pie on today's FYI. Welcome to... All right, folks. Info. Yeah, that's right. You've got a pizza episode of FYI if you haven't listened to it. And I know many of you know pizza to me is life. I love pizza. In fact, I can share the link with you. Let me copy it and put it over here in our chat room if you guys want to easy access to the pizza episode and a nice round of applause for our amigos let's see first person to get it chris Valrol. she says i love this movie kubla you got it too great job the movie is called mystic pizza and remember how we just said there really is a town called mystic connecticut and this was based on a real pizza parlor. I've got to tell you this. I know a lot of you guys think New York pizza, New York pizza. Yeah, Connecticut pizza is amazing. They have some of the best pizza parlors in the United States in Connecticut. Trust me, as a pizza connoisseur, it's amazing. I've had some of the best pizza of my life. It wasn't in Mystic. I was in New Haven, Connecticut. But I know for a fact that pizza lovers around the world take trips to Connecticut to try the pizza there. So no offense, New York, don't get offended. And Mystic Pizza is a real pizza parlor. It's located at, remember, with um, uh, with uh, direcciones, with addresses. Do you know what we say? We say uh, it's located at, la preposición es at. I live at tal dirección. Then the number comes first. So it's located at 55 West Main Street, in Mystic, Connecticut. And the writer, a woman named Amy Holden Jones, was vacationing there one summer. It's a beautiful place. And she saw this pizza parlor. And there was a line around the block. This, I mean, this thing was, it was like a, you know, a part of the culture. It wasn't just a pizza parlor. And she, uh, well, she was inspired to write this movie. And this is the debut in a theatrical feature film of Matt Damon. That's right. Ben Affleck auditioned for the film, but... <clears throat> Sorry, Ben. You would have to wait till Goodwill Hunting to get your big break. Also, Julia Roberts. This was her breakthrough film as well. So this is amazing. Some really, really famous stars came out of this movie. And at this point, they weren't really well-known. The movie is called... Mystic Pizza, Mystic Pizza, and uh, let's take a look at the at the scene. It, the priest says, "Be seated, sentaos, be seated," and then there's a pause, and he says, "We are gathered here to witness." Nos hemos juntado. Es muy de iglesias frase hecha aquí, right? We are gathered here to witness and bless the joining together forever of William and Josephina in Christian marriage. The firm covenant of marriage is permanent in this lifetime because it was established by God. Wow. Establecido por Dios. And once entered into it may never be broken. Without risk, riesgo, without risk, of total damnation. And total damnation is you're going to hell. Damnation, como traducen maldit, maldado, ma, condenación, perdición, maldición, damnation. De hecho, maldito, where's my damn car? ¿Dónde está mi maldito? Viene de ahí, damnation, damn. Ahora, cuando decimos la palabra damn, la N no lo pronunciamos. Where's your damn homework? Okay, no es una palabra bonita, pero es mejor que fucking. <laughs> Menos vulgar, right? So he says, so we ask you now, in the presence of God, family, and friends, to declare your intentions to enter a binding and permanent union. And a, if something is binding, a contract is binding, une a dos partidos, two parties. 
It's a binding. You can't get out of it. A binding and permanent union with one another for as long as you both shall draw breath on this earth. Now, it would be much, much more common to say as long as you breathe, right? But as long as you draw breath, well, you know, since they like to have those ceremonies and things in the church, well, they like to use funny, sometimes even antiquated words. Well, my amigos, we've got to go to our final commercial break. We'll be right back with tons more. So stick around.
You can get all the information you need there or just follow us on social media. That's right, folks. It's time for today's Double. Double trouble, baby. Yeah, you know what time it is. Give it up. Double. Double trouble. I said double. Double trouble. Double. Double trouble. I said double. Double trouble. That's right, amigos. That's right. It's double trouble only on the show with no name. And here's where we take a look at a translation with a twist. You have to use the same word twice in this translation. Good luck. I know you guys won't have much difficulty. I think this one on, on a scale of one to 10, this is like a one or a two for you guys. Maybe not for beginners, but for you, show with no namers, definitely, definitely. Let's see, a couple comments as well. Well, first, let me give you the double trouble and then we'll play the say what soundbite and then I'll read your comments. Vamos en orden, because you know, me pierdo yo solo. I can get lost in a, a glass of water, okay? Seriously, and that's me trying to be organized. Oh my God. Okay, me llamó por teléfono y me dijo que cogiera el toro por los cuernos. Me llamó por teléfono y me dijo que cogiera el toro por los cuernos. Aren't you going to pick that up? <laughs> pick it up, pick it up. All right, let's see. Chris Valrol says, I really want to go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. For... We got to go in order. Si no me pierdo, guys. Here's your Say What soundbite for the fourth time, and then... We'll take a look at your comments. We'll see also how you did on the double trouble. And I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. All right. There you go, my amigos. There you go. That was the fourth and final listen. We'll see if anybody else can figure it out. But in the meantime, we'll see how you guys are doing on our double trouble section. Let's see. Chris Valrol says, I really want to go to the USA. What a delicious trip. Well, Chris, let me just warn you. I always put on some pounds. Sin querer, eh? Siempre pongo unos quilillos. I, and I try not to, but the portions are bigger. And when you put butter, sugar, and salt and everything, it's good. <laughs> I don't mean good for your health. I mean good. <laughs> Tasty. Let's see. Kubla says, no wonder New York and, Con and Connecticut have mouth-watering pie. They're chock full of Italian ancestry. Oh, and don't leave out New Jersey. New Jersey as well has some amazing, the, the tri, lo que nosotros llamamos the tri-state area. Tri de tres estados. Excellent. Some of the greatest pizza, at least in the United States, I can tell you that. Um, let's see, Kubla's taking a stab at our double trouble, and he says, he called me on the horn, and I, and told me, excuse me, so he called me on the horn, and told me to take the bull by the horns. Kubla, that is correct. <laughs> Excellent job. Excellent job. And you know what? I don't know if you guys were paying attention, but I said that earlier. Dije la, sin querer, and it slipped out. Se me salió sin querer. I said something. Oh, you can call us on the horn when I was talking about Vaughn. I was like, you can call us on the horn at 911-385831. And I said, oops. Les acabo de dar el double trouble. I mean, oops. So yeah, the horn, el cuerno, think about it is another way of saying the phone. The old ones used to look like a horn, kind of, right? So he called me on the horn and told me to take, or I, I used grab, same, grab sounds more, right? He, he called me on the horn and told me to grab the bull by the horns. But me, I was way too horny. <laughs> no? I'm horny, 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 horny tonight. Cachondo. 
<risa> no es que tienes cuernos, es que estás cachondo. I'm horny, 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 horny tonight. Let's see, Chris taking a stab at it. And Chris says he took the phone and called me on the horn and told me to take the bull by the horns. Chris, you did a, a double, double trouble there. Wow. Impressive. Impressive. All right, well, folks, let's keep it moving along because we've got so much to do, and you know how this goes. So it's time for your joking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what did the guy say when he walked into the bar? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. You get it? Ouch. He walked into the bar. <laughs> um, you're joking. That's right. That's right, amigos. You're joking only on the show with no name. And today we're going to look at some <laughs> boxing jokes. All right. So don't throw in the towel. <laughs> no tires la toalla. Remember, I que usar to throw in. It's not don't throw the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Guys, I'm against the ropes. I'm up against the ropes, right? These are all things that come from boxing. KO, I'm a knockout, right? Knockout. So let's see if you know these jokes. Let's see if you get them is more important. And if you don't, don't worry, because I will tell you where, where the joke is, where the punchline is. I asked my trainer at the gym, I asked my trainer at the gym, le pregunté a mi entrenador in the gym, if I could start shadow boxing. ¿Cómo se traduce esto? Shadow boxing. Dame un segundo here. Shadow boxing. Eh, boxeo de sombra. Oh, the same. When you're boxing kind of against yourself to practice, right? Shadow boxing. So I asked my trainer at the gym. I know you can't tell. No se nota mirándome. But I asked my trainer at the gym if I could start shadow boxing. And you know what he said? He said, knock yourself out. <laughs> no. Knock yourself out? <laughs> no. Still not funny? No. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Tú mismo. <laughs> All right. Well, I thought it was funny. Knock yourself out is obviously no, noqueate, tirate a ti mismo, derrumbate a ti mismo. But if I say, hey, Chris, can I grab one of those lemonades? I see you have a few lemonades over there. Can I grab one? ¿Puedo coger una? And you say, yeah, man, knock yourself out. Tú mismo, tira. tira no, que coge hasta, hasta que no puedas más, co you know? So knock yourself out. It doesn't literally mean that, you know, that the in la cabeza hasta que caigas. Let's see how they trans. Knock yourself out. Okay, aquí lo tienes. Knock yourself out. Adelante, dale. You're giving somebody permission to do something. Knock yourself out, right? Ahora, si lo piensas literal, es totalmente absurdo, right? Knock yourself out. Oops. Wrong bell. I was looking for that one. <laughs> a TKO, a technical knockout. So do you get it now? And what does it mean if I say the boxer married a knockout? Ahí tienes otro que me acabo de inventar. The boxer married a knockout. A knockout is un diez. Un, una gema. Beautiful woman. All right. He married a knockout. Knock yourself out. To me, hey, if you say that to your, if you're in English class, I don't know if you guys have a teacher. Some of you are in class with me. If you say that in my class, if I say, hey, guys, we're going to start with this. And you say, knock yourself out. No, adelante. I'm, I'm going to say, whoa. I'm, I'm, you're going to get like a quadruple, totally native. All right, great. Second joke. Well, third, I added one. Why do pirates always win boxing matches? Why do pirates, no pir pirates, pirate, pirate, pirate. Why do pirates always win boxing matches? Because they have a killer hook. <laughs> now the word killer is de muerte, no? 
infalible. They have a killer hook. Well, a hook, Garfio, Captain Hook, right? But also a hook is a punch. You have a left hook, you have a right hook, you have an uppercut, right? In boxing, I don't know too much. You have a jab, which is very close. So left hook, right foot, right hook, que vienen en forma de un gancho. No, I don't know very much about boxing, but I can tell you that much. He hit him with a left hook, with a right hook. He hit him uh, with an uppercut. Wow, what an uppercut. What a jab. A jab is boom, 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 boom. De cerca, right? So you get it? <laughs> Why do pirates always win? They have a killer hook. Tienen un gancho de la muerte de un garf. <laughs> hey, maybe uh, maybe they're hooked on boxing. <laughs> Enganchados al boxe. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Never mind, never mind. One more, one more, and I promise we'll move on. What do boxers carry their underwear in? And that's funny because boxers are a kind of underwear too. Hmm, tenemos un double trouble. Pero tiene sentido, ¿no? Porque son los que llevan los boxeadores. So what do boxers carry their underwear in? Easy. A briefcase. <laughs> no? A briefcase? No? What is it? What is a briefcase then? Well, maybe we should explain that, shouldn't we? A briefcase is a small little suitcase, usually used in business. You say maletín. I love it. Small suitcase. Maleta, maletín. <laughs> Muy fácil. In English, it's a briefcase. Brief. Okay. But we're, okay, brief is breve, rápido. But that's not really that funny, is it? All right. Well, we've got two kinds of underwear. Well, there are more, but the most common ones, boxers or briefs. And briefs is another way of saying underwear, like skivvies, right? Um, so briefs, you get it now? Briefs. We also call them drawers. So listen to this double trouble. Listen to this. Listen to this double trouble. Hold it. <laughs> Madre mía. <laughs> My drawers are in the drawers. Mis gallumbos están en los cajones. <laughs> I got to be careful with that word because usually another word comes out. So do you get it now? What do boxers carry their underwear in? A briefcase. Are you wearing boxers or briefs? Don't answer the question, please. It's just a joke. But folks, it's time to move on. We've got a lot of celebrating to do in today's famous birthday trivia. That's right, that's right, amigos. It's famous birthdays only on the show with no name, and I can't believe it, man. We are just flying through today's show, and you guys, I, I don't know if it's the heat, but it's affecting you in a positive way. I mean, you always kick ass, but this last week, I don't know what's going on. I have been completely blown away, seriously. It's been magical. You guys, you know, one after another, and not just, I mean, all of you have shown me that you've got what it takes to get by in English. And that's the whole purpose. Remember, one man has two hours to teach you English to see if you've got what it takes to get by. And that's what you're doing. So awesome stuff, folks. I'm very proud of you and keep up the wonderful work. All right, let's see whose birthday it is today. The first person was born in 1959, an American actor and filmmaker. He played Private Soldado Raso. Ah, ves, ya se me ha quedado. Uh, he played Private Gomer Pyle in the movie Full Metal Jacket that came out in 1987, classic war movie. He was in Men in Black, and he was also in Men in Black, the series. He was in The Cell as well. 
And he uh, he was born in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, of Italian descent with ancestors, antepasados, ancestors from Naples. Es Napolitano. And what else uh, could we say about this guy? He was also in Adventures in Babysitting. He was in Mystic Pizza, which was today's name that movie. And he's a very, very talented actor. If you remember in Full Metal Jacket, he played this, uh, you know, ignorant redneck guy who goes to the military. It's a classic. So many lines from that movie are quoted all the time. Están citados. It's like Back to the Future, Terminator. There's certain movies that just give us tons of lines in pop culture. And this guy, when you look at his name, you're like, of course he's Italian. Of course. Either that or Argentinian. Well, sometimes they have Italian nicknames as well. All right. Next up, she was born in 1917, an American actress, singer, and activist. And basically, she was in the business, in show business, for 70 years. She joined the chorus of the Cotton Club when she was 16 years old. And the Cotton Club is a was a famous New York City nightclub. And uh, it's where a lot of jazz, swing, a lot of huge people got their start. People such as Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, this woman, and so many others. And it's a, you could watch an interesting documentary on her life, because her life, she had a lot of problems. She really did. She was tired of being typecast as a black woman who sings a song. And so she was she was even blacklisted uh, during the 50s because she was uh, affiliated, supposedly, with communist backed groups. And uh, well, she uh, she didn't have an easy life. Let's put it this way. Very interesting, nonetheless. And one of my favorite songs of her of, one of my favorite songs of hers is Stormy Weather. Stormy Weather. Eh, tiempo de tempestad. No, de tempestad. Stormy weather and i guess that defined her her life um next up we've got iron mike or kid dynamite or the baddest man on the planet yeah that's right those are some of his nicknames and you're thinking baddest pero no sería worst yeah pero eso es cuando es bad malo cuando bad como malote he's badder than his brother es más malote he's the baddest man ahí bad y bad uh, battery baddest, sí que sí, se pueden usar con ER y EST. En vez de the worst, uh, worse than and wor the worst, porque significan otra cosa. So, the baddest man on the planet. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got some winners. <laughs> Kubla and Chris. Number one, Vincent D'Onofrio. What a talented actor he is. And another Italian American out there. Number two, Lena Horn. We looked at the word horn today to call somebody on the horn, por teléfono, to grab the bull by the horns. Lo único su nombre tiene una e de más, pero se pronuncia horn. And Iron Mike Tyson, who's got a lisp. Yeah, he speaks like this. So now I understand why he became such a big boxer. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. All right, let's take a look at our Say What soundbite, which was Iron Mike Tyson. And he says, I dedicated this fight. Then he changes his thought. I wasn't going to fight. So I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. So he's just going back and forth with his thoughts. I was going to rip his heart out. Y vosotros sabéis que no se pronuncia reap. I was going to rip. Lo vimos. So to rip out, arrancar. See? I told you there were more meanings. I was going to rip his heart out. Iba a arrancarle el corazón. I'm the best ever. Su humildad. He's very humo, uh, humble. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal, the most vicious, and the most ruthless, despiadado, champion there's ever been. So here he is, folks, the understated, <laughs> 
poco exagerado, Mike Tyson. All right, folks, time for Name That Lyric. Hi, hello, Alberto. I think the song is... <laughs> no? Sorry, bye. Name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric, name that lyric on the show with no name, 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 Excellent job, excellent job. I couldn't ask for better students, and I know that I'm not the only one who says that. I've heard those same words from Kyle, from Simena. I've heard them from Tosh Pasqua. We we talk about you guys. You probably talk about us among each other. Well, we talk about you guys too, and I don't mean gossip. I mean, we talk about you guys like, aren't these people awesome? I mean, they're so dedicated, they're so driven, they're so kind. And don't ever change, amigos. Aside from the English stuff and being great students, I think you're all great people, too. And many of you I know, many of you we have met in the flesh, in carne viva, in persona. We have met in the flesh. And I know you're great people. And the ones who I haven't met, I can tell by the way you write, by the way you communicate, the words you use, that you're also a great person. So thank you, not just for being great students, but for being amazing people and you know making me Love sitting in front of this microphone every day and chatting with you guys. It's an absolute pleasure. And I mean that after 15 plus years, it's, what can I say? I'm the luckiest guy alive. Maybe Mike Tyson's the baddest man on the planet. I'm the luckiest man on the planet. And that's thanks to you guys. The song I'm going to give you today is Lena Horn. Lena Horn. And it's stormy weather. I mentioned it before. I gave you a lot of clues today throughout the show, my amigos. So let's take a look at the text together, and then we can sing it as well. She says, don't know why. No sé por qué. There's no sun up in the sky. No hay sol ahí arriba en el cielo. Stormy weather. Stormy weather, tormentoso, uh, tiempo tormentoso. Since my man and I ain't, sería aren't, since ain't is correcto, pero suena mal, pero bueno, es música. Because aren't is dos sílabas, ain't es una. ¿Ves lo que ha pasado ahí? So since my man and I ain't together, desde que no estamos juntos, it keeps raining all the time. Life is bare, la vida es desnuda, sin nada. Gloom, tristeza, cosas gris, uh, melancholia and misery everywhere. Stormy weather. The good thing is that's the opposite of the vibe here on the show. But either way, this is a beautiful song. If you have not heard it, it's Lena Horn and Stormy Weather. Thank you so much, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Stormy. 